Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome back to episode two of my Minecraft Let's Play. We're back here outside of our little mountainside base, following on from episode one where we did our massive mining session. If you missed the first episode, please do go and check that out on the channel. But we got a nice amount of resources from our first mining session. A massive thank you to everybody who did watch episode number one and for all your comments, I really found them very helpful indeed. It seems like there are silverfish blocks that can occur in certain areas. And when I look at my F3, I am actually in a mountain biome. I did a bit of reading myself outside of the episode and it seems that silverfish are quite common in mountain biomes. So that would explain why I got attacked by so many silverfish in that first episode. I also just want to say a big thank you to everybody who mentioned about my combat style in episode one. Yeah, I do know about the bar underneath the crosshair, but I think just in my time of panic against the silverfish i was just spamming the attack button so i will keep that in mind though and in future episodes i will be sure not to do the same thing again or so he says at least so looking ahead to episode two i have got quite the list of things i want to start working on and to achieve in this episode i want to create a wheat farm straight away and definitely a sugarcane farm just to start getting on wheat and paper. But in addition, the wheat is gonna be used for our other simple farm that I wanna create, which is the cow farm. Because like I said in episode one, leather is such an important resource to make books for enchanting tables in the early game. So they're the three farms I want to work on in this episode. After that, I want to look at expanding the base. So I want to kind of create an upstairs, a downstairs, some different areas and just expand it out a bit around the hillside that we're currently residing in. Once the base has been expanded, there's two more things that I want to look at. First of all will be a simple storage system. I'm not going to look to do any sort of automatic storing at the minute, but just a room with a bit more organization and a bit more space will be just the thing I'm looking for in the second episode. Finally, I want to create some form of smelting system. I've always been guilty in the past of having a single furnace smelting system where you have hoppers in the side, hoppers at the bottom, you're just chucking your fuel and chucking everything you want smelting, it all pops out and everything is hunky dory. But not in this let's play. I wanna create an eight furnace smelting system. You know, in the future we'll probably go a bit bigger, but for now, I think eight furnaces will be just what I need. So that is the plan for episode two. We've got four main things we are gonna be working towards here. So. Without further ado, let's jump into bed because it's almost night time and we will pick up this in the morning. It's a brand new day in the Minecraft world and let us get going. So first and foremost, we're going to want some tools to be able to help us along our way. And it turns out we don't have a lot of tools. So let's go and grab some wood. This is such a pretty area. This is a flower forest. I don't think I've ever been in a flower forest before, but it's so pretty. I'm gonna to have to try and keep this uh, like this for as long as I can, but it's really helpful to have the flower forest because that means we can get lots of colors for dyes later on if we need to be doing dyeing of stuff. When we come around to shulker boxes, if we want color coded shulker boxes, or if we want to create a sheep farm, it'll be very helpful to have this flower forest. Definitely something I like to do is replant the trees just so we never, we, we always, we always have a good supply and a good stash of trees. So yeah, we'll just keep planting the trees and make everything as reusable as possible. Now that we've got some wood, I think what I'm just going to do is go around this area and just see if I can take out some grass to help us with some seeds which will because we want to get working on our wheat farm also we've got a few cows around here so we're, we're in good stead for creating that cow farm as well in my other single player world i literally just put cows behind fences and did nothing else with them but i'm sure there's something else that we can probably do here just to make that a little bit more efficient what i actually had to do was keep jumping over the fencing to be able to collect the leather and the beef that was dropped every time I killed the cows for their leathery, beefy goodness. So this time around, I wanna do something a bit more effective. One thing I'm not sure of actually, does grass naturally respawn in certain biomes? That's a good question. Maybe I'll just clear out this grass here on top of this little ledge here, and we can see if we get anything back at a later date. Okay, so I think it's fair to say we're we're not shy here. We're gonna create diamond hoe. Yes, we are creating a diamond hoe. Now, 
I've got all my seeds. I've got 42 in total, which is it's, it's a good start. It's a good start. We've got our bucket ready here as well. So we've got 42 to start with. We're going to just level out some of this area here just to flatten things off. Then we'll need to create a perimeter just to stop anything from getting into our wheat farm. And then once we have that, we'll dump the wheat. I'm going to leave enough space because I do want to expand this to become a bigger wheat farm in time. It's a very simple design, but I got it from Alfie5, who is a member of the multiplayer server that I have been playing on occasionally. And I was always under the impression that you need lots of water and you need to create strips for farms but no that's not the case quite mad that you only need a single block of water for a whole nine by nine area i didn't realize that a single block of water could hydrate so much land so here we are equipped with our diamond hoe and i'm just going to mark out our area so we're going to one two three four five is the center one two three four this one right here is where we're going to place our water and i'm just going to put a trap door just above that just to make things nice again i got the that idea from watching alfie's farm have i done that in the right place i've only gone three okay panic over i don't really know what the problem was there my maths was completely wrong and i thought i'd have to dig out this because i wanted a two by two area all the way around this farm but no everything has come together nicely so let's now create our area here a few more down here will complete all our farm as for now so we've got our basic wheat farm here which which will do us for now we do need to surround it with something however now on my other single player game the way i surround it was with trapdoors which allowed for easy access in and out i may do the same here but let's remember trapdoors are really expensive to make and we're going to want 36 trapdoors to surround this Given that six planks give us three trapdoors, I think it is. Yeah, that's a lot of planks. Also, what I want to do, once I've surrounded this with trapdoors, I want to have some form of suspended light here as well. One thing I noticed on my other game was that when I was AFK farming, this area would always fill up with creepers and mobs, and they would just trample down the crops, and it would reduce the efficiency of the farm. Having some form of lighting here will do us very good as well. Whether we have suspending lighting, or maybe we could get away with a cobblestone wall with a gap, giving us the ability to put some torches on the corners, maybe? I don't know. I do like the trapdoor method because it fits flush to the edge of the farm. Whereas with the cobblestone wall, you would have a slight gap between that and the farm. Huh. So farm surround dilemmas aside, we're going to put some sugar cane in here for our second farm. As you can see, I'm quite poor in the sugar cane department right now. So we're just going to put these four down here. What I might do though is I might just have a quick scout around the coastline here. Oh, I think I spotted some sugarcane over here. Well, there is some more over in the distance. So let's head over there. Nice, there's quite a bit of it here. Take these last few and then we'll go and extend our farm a little bit more. Okay, just putting the last few bits of sugarcane in here and we are done. Excellent, just hit the grass a bit more, see if we get any seeds. But yeah, now we just gotta wait for that to grow up. We'll go and head back to our wheat farm and we'll just go and use these wheat seeds that we've picked up while we've been out and about doing other things nice we're not too far off capacity now we just need to wait for things to grow up i think we need 16 more seeds let's go on a seed grab mission 16 seeds it shouldn't be too difficult to find and our last few seeds go in like that excellent our wheat farm is at full capacity so now we've got to do is work out how we're going to do the outside of this wheat farm. As wrong as it sounds, deforestation in Minecraft is actually one of the best things you can do in regards to having a sustainable source of wood. You get so many saplings when a tree starts to decompose in Minecraft. So I took down two trees and I've had about seven saplings back. So when someone tells you not to chop down the trees, tell them, hey, it's for a good cause. Okay, so I decided to go down the trapdoor route because I really like that look around the farm. It just looks so neat and tidy and flush to the side of the farm. I just think it's a really nice, nice compact design. And it keeps the farm really nice, compact and enclosed. 
I think I may have used compact a few many times there. So now that that's done, I'm just going to do a nice little path all the way around this farm. Can't do the block right next to the trapdoor, unfortunately. Okay, I'm just going to see here. If I get rid of this trapdoor and then make it a path, can I place the trapdoor on top of the path? No, it turns it back to grass. So that's fine. We don't need to worry about that. What I could do when I've gathered a few more resources, I could replace these outer blocks here with maybe some stripped oak logs. Okay, experiment time. We'll put the oak log in there, strip it. Do you know what? I actually quite like that. What looks better? We could vary it this way, perhaps. What if we was to alternate it? And then on these corners, we could do it. Okay. Okay, just playing around here. And I quite like this alternating effect with the stripped logs here. Now, having these stripped logs on this corner here will actually allow me to build up like a fence post. And then we could have our lighting in the middle here. Yeah, okay, I've got some really cool ideas now. Okay, so I've been out and gathered some more wood so that we can have a bit more of a play around with. So I've also gathered up some birch logs. Just wonder what difference that would make. I mean, is there any difference actually in the birch? and the oak. Okay, it makes it lighter. And I think I like that better. So what I think I'll do is I'll dig out this bit here. I'm gonna use birch for the corners and we'll use oak for the sides. Last few logs here to strip and that's it, we're done. I've never used strip logs before, but I think that's really nice. I think we had the, having the variance there of the two colors, the different orientation, just. It goes really nice. I really like that. So now that that's all done, I now need to work on the light that's going to be suspended above this farm just to keep their mobs away while we're AFKing. I've got an idea of what I want to do. I think by putting some fence posts on each corner, going up to probably three or four high, making a square frame and then making a cross frame in the middle out of the fence posts with a suspended block in the middle of stripped wood and then we can attach torches to each side i think that'll look pretty cool so let's head on into our base and we'll go and craft some fence posts and then i will put everything together okay so i've put my first two frames on either of these corners one using birch and one using oak yeah i think i prefer the lighter wood so i think we'll run with birch of course the only problem with that is we don't have any birch logs left so we're going to have to go and get some more birch wood. Nothing's ever simple, is it? Considering I don't see myself as being very creative, I seem to be quite picky at this moment in time. So I was just out gathering up some birch wood. And why is that? Is that one of those areas in the new update where the nether kind of bleeds through into the normal world? I remember seeing the update information before 1.16 came out that you could find these partially built nether portals. That's really cool. Also, magma blocks, they're quite useful. Neverack, not so much. This is a bit of a problem though. I've chopped down the birch trees. The birch saplings seem to not be as common as oak saplings, which is unfortunate. Especially if we want to be using more birch in the near future. Oh, we have one. We got one. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. We got one. But it's only one. And we just got 30 birch logs for three birch saplings. It's certainly not a great return. The birch saplings seem to be more common when you actually punch the leaves. Normally I would chop away the wood and let the leaves degrade naturally it seems here though that if you punch the leaves you almost get a better sapling drop rate so 
maybe somebody in the comments can let me know is it better to punch leaves rather than waiting for the trees to naturally degrade while we're over here i thought i'd just check on my sugar cane and that's quite a nice bit of sugar cane we've got there we need to uh head home though because it's it's getting kind of dark and i don't have a sword on me okay guys so after a little bit of grinding for birch wood we have now finished my farm and i'll be honest i don't think i got the effect i was going for maybe it's the cross beams maybe there's too many cross beams if i removed say this side and the opposite side then maybe that would look a little bit better we'll come back to that at another time though for now i'm going to harvest all this lovely wheat that is ready and then we can move on to the final farm that i want to get done in this episode which is some cows i think for the time being i'll just keep them behind some fencing just to keep things nice and simple so let's go ahead and build the paddock and then we'll go and see if we can lure some cows over here okay so we've got our little cow holding area here we've done a similar sort of design as with the wheat farm over here you'll notice as well from the last time i showed you this i've changed up some of the blocks just to randomize the direction of the blocks just to add something a little bit different i don't know let me know your thoughts on that guys but the difference with this one is i've used oak fencing here as opposed to the birch fencing i may also bring it across just to carry this upper framework across over to this one have some more suspended lights maybe even have some suspended lights running along these pathways but one thing i wanted to try here and i don't know can cows go over trapdoors that was a bit of a bad experiment okay mr cow get over there and i'm going to put you in there and there can you escape it appears not the main reason i wanted to try that was because sometimes when you bring cows through gates it can be very very difficult so my thinking is maybe i could create a line of trap doors here flick them all up and then bring the cow in shut the gate behind me almost a bit like an airlock kind of system first baby of the world and our cow breeding scheme is well on the way we've got our sugar cane over there which is doing quite nicely we've got our wheat farm and now we have our little cow pen where we're going to breed up our cows and in a future episode i will look to automate this a little bit more and put them in some sort of cow breeding machine but for the early stages here that is more than enough and once we get quite a few cows in here we'll definitely have enough to create some books and some bookshelves and then we can start looking down the enchantment route. I also think over time it'll probably be a good idea to bring the sugarcane farm over here. But for the time being, I think it's all right by the water's edge over there. So now that we've completed all our farms, I think the next thing to do is expand this area. Because let's face it, our living area really isn't very big. And if we had guests over, it'd kind of be a bit cramped, wouldn't it? Let's be honest. I'm going to spend a bit of time to expand my base here. I've got a few ideas of what I want to do. I want to build up and i want to build down and it'd be nice to sort of have a little window coming out the side here maybe a little platform a balcony so i can step out and watch the sunrise over in the distance and watch the sunset over the hills over there and then underground i'd like an area under there so that we can then concentrate on putting our storage and first smelting systems down there so almost like a working area downstairs a living area upstairs and then this middle section will just be kind of like sort of like a, a hangout area so uh <sighs> here goes so i wanted to try something different with the base this time and i wanted to use a variety of blocks in the walls and floors and this was my first attempt and i thought it was too much i wasn't happy with it i felt like i used too many blocks in the walls and i definitely did not like the polish andesite in the walls so I kind of tore all this down after doing this because I really wasn't happy. I didn't like the look of it. And I searched the internet for some guidance and I found a handy little video which kind of gave me some inspiration. And then I rebuilt all the walls and the floors. And what you'll see next is the finished result. Okay, so believe it or not, a lot of time has passed since I last recorded a clip for this episode. Probably along the lines of two weeks and in that two weeks on and off for hour here an hour there i have been trying to work on my base trying to get some stuff put in and 
Like you all know, I'm not the most creative of people. Having said that, I've been watching some videos about using block palettes like stone, andesite, and stone bricks. And from that, I've been trying to build some walls and floors and different bits and pieces. As you will have seen in the previous clip, I started out and I felt like I went a bit too heavy handed, but I tore it all down and started again. Having said that though, I've been really busy trying to model the outside of the base and I've come to a point where I don't think it's finished, but I think I'm finished for this episode because if I carry on, I'll never see an end and then this episode will never get aired. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you my base. As you can see, I've been managing the cow farm. That's grown a bit since you last saw, but yeah, here is the base. Outside, yeah, it still kind of looks very bland. I think what I might do is I might try and mix some of these stairs up that I've put here on this platform with some andesite just to kind of give this texture. But as you can see on the majority of the walls, you'll see that I've been trying to mix things up. I'm a lot happier with the way I've done it now. I think on the previous clip, I just put too much on the walls. So I've tried to be a bit more reserved and I've taken out the polished andesite from the walls. I'm trying not to use that on walls, leaving that for floors only. So for walls, I've been using cobble, cracked bricks, stone bricks, andesite and stone. And then for floors, I've also been throwing in the polished andesite. I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. I wanted this to kind of come out of the side of the hill and I think I've achieved that. Entrance way, there's not really a lot going on here. I've slabbed the floor. We'll be working on stuff in here in following episodes. I want to do some pumpkin and melon farms in here. So yeah, all of this will get fleshed out in later episodes. I haven't really done anything with these walls here. First of all, let's head upstairs to my bedroom. As you can see, I've just been trying to do different things with the walls. Mix up the textures just to kind of give me that I don't know, that different feel, something I've never done before in Minecraft. So let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Have I done enough? Have I done not enough? I kind of put some wood there as a bit of a headboard to the bed. These are all slabs, so that's why they're all sunk into the floor. We've got a little decking area here. Uh, so yeah, we can look out over our farms. This whole process has made me realize one thing, and that's my sugarcane farm is too far away from my base. I've been farming the wheat and growing the cows, but I'm always forgetting about the sugarcane. So I think in a later episode, we're going to have to bring that closer to the base just to keep on top of that and keep our supplies going. Down here is our storage area. This is the room you saw in the previous clip. I feel like I did too much. I've tried to leave larger areas of stone untouched. So we've got bigger areas there. And then with the slabs on top, I can take the chests all the way to the top. As you can see, I have item frames on all the chests so I know where everything is. And then on the floor, just a few blocks. I've actually realized outside I used normal andesite, but here I haven't. So maybe I need to take the normal andesite out and just stick with stone polished bricks and cracked bricks. Like I said, it's my first ever attempt at using different blocks to texture walls. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'll be honest, I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. So having completed my base and my initial storage system of course it's not automated in any sort of way but it'll do us for now we now need to look at doing a smelting system which is the final task of the video <sighs> boy oh boy will i be glad when that's done because i'm gonna lie this episode has been going on for a very very long time and i really want you guys to see it so let's crack on with a smelting system so one thing I'd overlooked was the fact that most of the smelting systems that I'd already built previously in my testing world relied on comparators. And we've not been to the nether. And we don't have any quartz. So we're not going to be able to build anything with comparators. Welcome to my testing world. And this is the smelting system that I was thinking about making. So there's two minecarts in this system and then a hopper line which takes the items back up to the top like so. It's quite nice that the minecarts are only released out into the system by this comparator when there is something in the chest which is all well and good it, and it kind of stops the minecarts from going all the time they only go when they need to go. So as an example I've got some iron ore here we're just going to dump that in the middle chest. While there is something in the chest the minecart will keep going backwards and forward and distributing the iron out equally. Like I said, that's all well and good, but it relies on comparators and we don't have any quartz yet. So 
I have kind of come up with this, which is a similar idea. The only difference here is that we're not using the comparators to switch off the minecarts. I've actually just put in a switch. So when I want to do some work, I just turn the smelter on and it will go backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards. And when we're done, we shut the switch off. That closes the trapdoors and the minecarts stay where they are. That's all well and good. Uh, the There was one slight oversight with this initial design because I haven't put the furnaces in here. But this one here would need to be a lot lower because the idea with this one would be that it replaces the hopper line here and the droppers so that we can just keep it on three minecarts. I'm going to see if I can recreate this with eight furnaces. So let's see if we can recreate this within this testing world. Okay, so the first thing I want to see here, do I need a hopper? Does the iron drop out of the furnace? It does. Okay, so that's good. That's a good start. Okay, so I've got my hoppers. I've got my eight furnaces here. This is where our mine carts will run to. I need to power these rails here. And um, we power that block. That powers all our rails. Bring our blocks up. So this is the level. We want both of these to come up to the same level here. It's not that block, it's this block, I think. And we take our trap doors. So now with that in place, let's grab a lever. Excellent. Okay, so far so good. Ideally, I did want all of this in the same area. But what we could do is we could have the input chests on the first floor where I've got all that space in my base and then the output chest down in the storage area. So we've got our input here. This will be our fuel chest, which we will do. Yoink. This will be our smelting chest. Yoink. Set them on their merry way. I've done them the wrong way around. What an idiot. I think I'm gonna extend this one more block, actually. This didn't seem to get the right amount in this chest here. So if we extend this by one block past where we wanna go. Okay, so that now goes past by one extra block. Now let's not get our inputs wrong this time. <laughs> so it's, our input is here. And then our fuel is here. Turn them on. Okay, that looks even. Now we need our minecart. And I've not left enough space there. One slight alteration later. Okay, so. It's only dropping off one at a time. I think a hopper line would be better. Okay, our minecart is all prepped and ready again with some more iron. And this time we're using just some funnels. Nothing is flowing into our chests. Oh, it's a locked hopper. I've locked the hopper. And there we go. Okay. So I think this is our system. And we can always change it to use droppers later on. It's quite nice as well. It's only a two wide module. Okay. I'm happy with this. My only concern is, have I got enough rails? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, 22 rails we need. Have we got enough gold? All right, let's start building and then we'll worry about it when we get to it. So let's jump back into our single player world and begin building this beast. Okay, so here we are in our single player world. Now the area we need to build is 16 that way, two wide, and I think it was eight up and down. So I've got one, two, three, four, five here. I'm thinking we have our input chests on the first floor, somewhere around here. So we take out a couple of blocks here and we can just have them sat here and then our output chest can be down in the storage area itself. That would make loads of sense. We can't go that way, that's for sure. The other alternative would be to build it 
down here a bit. Um, no, we're going we're gonna to do it here. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it right here. Just a shame that's not level. Let's do it with it, not. Let's go. Okay, having checked the design again, it is only six high. So this actually works out pretty well. If we have our output chest here, our input chest will be directly above. I probably should have made a diamond pick for this, but I've already been through so many diamond picks. I don't really want to waste any more. Okay, so I'll have a chest here. See, I think we need to go down one more, don't we? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess we'll go down one more. Okay, our tunnel for our smelter is done. Let us now make our eight furnaces. We also need, I think we need 20, 24 funnels. We're also gonna want some chests for our hoppers so if we want 24 hoppers we're going to want 24 chests good job i went on a big tree grind right we want 24 chests for this plus six doubles that gives us 30 chests so while waiting for the iron to smelt let's get these furnaces in three four five six seven eight our stone supplies are pretty low so we're going to use some andesite here and we're gonna have hoppers coming in here. So we want two blocks here, followed by a block here and here. And then our chest is going to come out here. A minecart is sitting here. We need an input chest here and here. Another five hoppers. This should finish our hopper line at the bottom. Excellent, hopper line at the bottom is complete. Get this gold smelted. I should really look at the gold situation here. So let's get some gold smelting away. Pretty sure we're gonna want more iron. What's the recipe for rails? So that's the recipe for powered rails. And it seems quite expensive, but you do get six. And we only want 22. So we only need, oh, we're gonna have plenty of gold. We're gonna have plenty of gold. We actually don't need as many as I thought because we've only got two lines now of powered rails. So I think that will be enough. Okay, let's start putting the rails down here. Okay, this is the last hopper on here. So this is now done. The minecart sits here. And we need to put a trap door on this block i just thought as well we need two extra hoppers because we need two for the minecarts we need one more we need three more three more hoppers three more hoppers and then we're good so that is the last hopper i've run out of powered rails <sighs> my maths has been terrible okay we need another 10 iron forgetting everything we need some for the minecarts <sighs> we will get there we will get there okay so that is everything all done on there we can block that off afterwards that's not a problem we can get our minecarts now and then we can make our hopper minecarts now we need to put these into the system. So we put one on there. Hey, where did my, what? Oh, I only made one hopper minecart. I was panicking then. Okay, there are both our hopper minecarts right there. Now I'm thinking just a simple switch over here to activate that would work fine. I'm gonna mine out all of this area here and then we just gotta put the end blocks in. This was a pretty simple build. Oh, pickaxe problems. Yes, before you say anything, I'm using the stone pick. I didn't want to make an iron one and wait for it to smelt just to get this last bit done. So uh, yeah, that that's the reason why. Now we just need to power the rails, which should be as simple as polished block, redstone torch. Yes, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, time for a test. Do the minecarts fire? They do. And they are synchronized. 
Excellent. Hopefully if I got this right. My chests aren't in the right position, are they? That's issue number one. Okay, take two. Fuel. That's going into a hopper. Uh, things to smelt. That's going in there. Activate the system. Well, it's smelting. It seems to be working. Oh, yes. Our smelter is working. Boom. Uh-oh. That wasn't meant to happen. And finally, we are done. I am happy with where we are right now. So since the last clip, you'll notice I've done some patching up. I've retextured this wall and I've added in the floor tiles back up to the roof or to the floor on the other level. I've moved the position of the lever. And the reason I did that is just to hide the redstone, which is why we've got this stone area here. So we can turn it on, we can turn it off. And of course, I've got the sign there just to remind me because we all know what I'm like. I've got a terrible short-term memory. So then down here, I've just tidied this up, replaced everything with smooth stone, put some glass here as a little viewing platform down onto the rails. We can actually get all the way down here, which is really important. I found while I was mining out this thing, if items get into any of these hoppers or any of these furnaces, it will stop it from working. So I put some torch down just to keep it lit up and then we just got some basic access down there to all areas of our system. But yeah, there we go. We have all finished, the base is done and I'm pretty pleased. We've achieved everything we wanted to achieve in this video <sighs> and it's such a sigh of relief. I kid you not, I have been working on this video for two and a half, maybe three weeks. Like I said before, I only get dribs and drabs of time. So whenever I've had a free moment of time, I've just come on here and I've tried to get some progress done. Just as a reference, I have got about two and a half hours of raw footage that I've had to edit through and trim out and, and basically cut down for this video. So I hope it's not been too long. It's a little bit longer than I wanted the episode to be, but I've trimmed it down as much as I could possibly do. If you can let me know in the comments whether you don't mind the occasional long video, whether this is a good length of video, or if you'd like them a bit shorter in the future, that would be absolutely great. I'll try and take your comments on board. Also, I would really like some feedback on like the cutting of the sections. Am I doing too many cuts? Is it all flowing nicely? When I've watched it back, it seems okay, but I would really like your views and opinions on that if possible. But with that said, thank you very much everybody for watching episode number two of my Minecraft Let's Play. I've done so much work it feels in this episode and that puts us in a really good position going forward. Thank you for your support and until the next one, goodbye!